Well, in the tech world, we're always trying to make things smaller, right? Well, sometimes it just doesn't happen and companies make something even bigger. Yep, this is the Sonoff POW R3 and it brings some pretty cool features. One of them is the normally closed relay and no, that's not like my mouth that's normally open, but it brings a pretty awesome feature along with a pretty awesome power rating. So let's check it out. Oh, and look, it works with Hey Google. Not just Google, but the Hey Google. Probably just set off everybody's stuff, too. Is that right? So we did show this on the live stream with Matt and I kind of going through this. We'll leave the link down below. It's you didn't so, even change the baud rate higher? Come on. I, I thought you, about it. What do you, you do? Travis, we don't have this much time. It's all about the number of watch <laughs> minutes. Pretty cool live stream of how you just take some product and go through it and put Tasmoto on it, flash it, back it up the whole nine yards. It is a longer live stream, but hey, you would learn a lot of cool stuff for doing some sort of new product such as this. So it is a big boy. But there's a reason. It is a 25 amp big boy. This is not a commercial for Mountain Dew, but hey, if Mountain Dew ever wants to sponsor something, hey, go right ahead. It's as tall as a 12 ounce. We call it down the south a Coke can, even though it's not Coke. So don't pick on us too much. Or from the north, I guess you call it soda pop, right? That just sounds weird to me, but this is the size of this guy here. So to open this, it's fairly simple. And this does have a type of DIN rail type of bracket. There's some other parts and pieces to it. I don't have a DIN rail set up, so I won't be mounting that. And there's four screws to this. And once you do open this up, you do have to be careful because inside, there's some wires that attach to this power supply here. So do be careful that when you go to open it up, you don't rip the wires out. And what I did was there's wires here and you can refer to this video is, and that's why I do record a lot of stuff, me taking stuff apart because then I can just go back and play it. So I unscrewed these here and pulled these wires out and then I kind of just folded it over. Look at these wires. How many smart switches have you seen these beefy wires inside? And these terminals are beefy. These will take a full size Phillips screwdriver and you can put a big wire in there. I mean, it's pretty decent size hole there. So this one, I will say, based on just those wires, we'll take that 25 amp load. Now, what's different about this is from what I remember, we looked up, basically there was a relay switch that then kicked the other relay on. And this is a full 30 amp, 250 volt rated relay. And you'll notice something he weird here that you'll, this little round thing, a lot of people will call that, uh, some call it the donuts or the current transformer or people know them as SCTs, but those are split core transformers. These is not split. The wire just passes through. If you've seen some of the power monitoring stuff, 
that's how this is done just measures one of the leads going through and this is a 30 amp donut and they're using the same chip as the Sonoff S31 and some of their other power monitoring. It's a very, I would call, cool chip for doing power monitoring over what you see in some of the other cheap plugs. And you'll also notice right next door to it is the header pins. They've labeled them all and they've even soldered headers. So you can just put on your little DuPont jumpers 3v3 ground ESP TX ESP RX so there's your little wires and all you got to do to flash this guy if you don't want to run stock firmware which I highly recommend not doing is don't run stock make it yours make it local put your DuPont jumpers go to a USB TTL device that you basically just slide the jumpers on you will need 3v3 in the ground as well, so you'll need four DuPont jumper wires. You can pretty much get these anywhere, and sometimes I've heard they do reproduce themselves. Then, you do need GPIO Zero. Where's that at, you say? Guess what? They've labeled it right here for you. Right there, it says flashing. Then there's even a reset button. The reset truly just resets the device. But flashing is GPIO zero, so you would just hold that down as you apply power, and then you can run Tasmatizer on it or whatever ESP flashing tool you want to. And there's the ESP chip right there along with the flash memory. Now, there's some other cool stuff. I want to talk about this cool little story. If you take this sticker off, they didn't have this sticker in the FCC photos. It says Custom PAL R2. Well, this is the PAL R3. So, and it says by Oyo. Well, if you look up what Oyo is, they have a bunch of hotels worldwide. And I did check with IT, and yep, that's it. Oyo was doing a project for all their hotels. I'm assuming they're trying to turn something off in their hotel rooms while someone's not staying. But then, of course, you know, the pandemic hit and probably got put on the back burner. Well, we get the benefit of getting this beautiful little design here that's very beefy so you'll also notice there's some terminals for you as well that they were gonna it looks like they were gonna add something so they've traced those out ground ADC GPO 15 and 16 that you if you really wanted to could put some other sensor on there for the ADC is analog to digital and do keep in mind there are some special circumstances with 15 and 16 if you do use those. And we'll leave the little ESP8266 guide down below and you can go read those if you're going to use them. And just in case, if you did want to know what gauge these jumper wires were, they're 12 gauge jumper wires inside this smart switch. And something else I didn't mention why they probably chose this method of power monitoring is basically they're not having to get in between the load and have another point of failure just to do some power monitoring it's, it's what's great about doing this you just put it around it and the load is not impacted at all so if you do need a step-by-step -step on how to put tasmoda on this particular device I'll roll a clip with, we did the S31. It's pretty close to it, except of course the S31, we did have to clip the wires to the pins. Now this one's a lot easier because it's just sliding the DuPont jumpers on. But the process is exactly the same. You just put the regular Tasmoda build on it and then you add it to your network. So if you've already seen that, you know how to do that. You can find all the little markers down below and you can skip on past that. Now do remember, that the TX goes to the RX on the flasher and then the RX goes to the TX on the flasher. You have to flip them because you're transmitting from here. So this one should receive it. And then when this one transmits, this one should receive it. You can't do TX to TX and RX to RX because then they'll just be bashing their heads. And remember, you do need to hold the button and then plug it in. Then you can let go of the button and we're using Tasmatizer here. You can use Node MCU, Pi Flasher, ESP Tool. If you use those, do make sure you do use D out as the flashing type. 
and we're going to do release. You do the full release. Do not use Tasmodo Lite because there's a particular feature that's missing we like to use in the power monitoring. And you do want to use erase before flashing. So we'll go ahead and hit Tasmatize. And there we go. You're tasmatizing your device. Maybe you had an issue and you couldn't get things right or whatever. Jump on down in the Discord. It's a friendly little chat with a lot of different people hanging out in the community. And the link's down below in the video description. And come hang out with us. You'll learn some stuff. Even I learn stuff every day in there. Process successful. Power cycle the device. You'll want to pull up a Wi-Fi scan on, say, your phone or a laptop or whatever, or tablet, doesn't matter to me, as long as it can scan for an access point. What you're going to look for is a Tasmoda underscore and a bunch of letters and numbers, and that's going to be your new device. Go ahead and attach to it, and it should give you the auto login, but if it doesn't, go to 192.168.4.1 and it will pull up the access point page on that device. So once you do get Tasmodo on your network and you do browse to the IP to get to the GUI of the device itself, as of now, you're gonna come up with that Sonoff Basic. If you're using the regular just Tasmodo build, it defaults to Sonoff Basic, which I still think is weird these days because we don't do a whole lot of Sonoff Basics. We're always flashing all kind of other stuff. But you'll notice something weird. Right as soon as you get on the device, it actually has the power is on. And I know I think we talked about it in the live stream and I think I had it backwards or just didn't realize even though we did talk about the normally closed relay. Here we are and basically this shows off, but then when you turn it on, you'll notice my little kilowatt meter actually goes off. The reason this is, is the relay is backwards because it's normally closed, so there doesn't have to be any energy applied to the relay to allow electricity to pass. I wish they would do an S31 like that, but hey, I've even had my S31 on my washer and dryer for probably almost three years, and the relay stays energized, so I can have my washer and dryer work. Well, this being a 25 amp load capacity, I can say that's probably why they did this that way, because it's probably mostly on, and being in that hotel project, they wanted it always on, just turn it off sometimes. So it's backwards. Since it is closely based on that Sonoff S31 for power monitoring and everything else and just the relay is backwards, we're going to jump into configuration and no, you don't need any special templates, no special websites or goofiness or whatever. Just come into configure template. It's built all straight into Tasmoda. And go to based on and go look for the Sonoff S31. And then we'll change the name if you want. We'll call it Sonoff POW R3. Now remember I said that relay was backwards. You'll see down here it says relay one. Well, we're gonna change that to relay underscore I. So that means relay inverted. And that's all you do, hit save. Now we will need to activate it. So just hold on once you do hit save, because you'll notice it's still a Sonoff Basic. There's a couple ways to activate it. And real quick, what a template is, a template is just a module, it's module zero. So you can just go to the console and type module zero, but there's multiple ways to do that. You can come in here and go to configure other. I know it's weird to do template stuff in other, and you could activate it. You could also, if you go to configure module, because remember I said template drives the modules, you'll notice you do have a Sonoff PAL R3 now because that's what we called our template. And you just pick that one. It's the same thing as doing module zero. Don't change anything, hit save. And once you should hear that relay actually invert when it reboots. So now on is on. When we turn it off, you can see my kilowatt meter goes off. We're not gonna go over the entire power calibration thing. I've done that in the Sonoff S31 video as well. And we'll leave the link down below. But basically you want to set your voltage, 
your amperage and then the wattage with a known load like we use say like with a light bulb but considering that it is kind of small for this device you may want to find a device that's much higher say as a constant heating source of some sort so pretty cool pretty easy and definitely flexible little device well i wouldn't say little it's a big, pretty big boy device if you're doing something cool with it and definitely hit us down below and come check us out on discord and maybe shoot some pictures of how you possibly installed this i'd like to see what some people are doing with these things especially in the overseas markets where you're using that whole 240 thing and you can really push a load through this thing so I want to thank all the Patreon subscribers and supporters and new bring new products and projects to the channel all the time. I do appreciate it. And yep, smash all them buttons and y'all take care. Okay. Now. Hurry. Hmm? Wait. You gotta get up? You gotta... Okay. Three, two, one. Go. Let's do this.